Okay, so we're checking out the uh, FlySky FS-ST8 radio transmitter in this video. So, um, I kind of actually got this by accident. I thought, based on my conversation with my uh, contact at Bangor, that this would somehow work with Express LRS modules in the back here. And uh, there's, um, this is the upgraded version. And they have this uh, setup here where you can actually put these pieces in the back. And they have another part that goes on the other side here for the pins for a JR module. And so, based on that, I thought this was going to have some sort of Express LRS compatibility. And while those modules are the same size and they, will, they would fit in there if you have that adapter attached to the back, the system does not currently support those modules. It's actually only for a GR module from FlySky for the, uh, I think it's called the AFHDS3 protocol, which is kind of similar to Express LRS. So maybe that's where the mix up occurred. Uh, however, at the end of the day, currently it's not supported. Um, this has a sort of an updated version of the FlySky. Um, radio transmitter system which is and basically if you look at this overall this is kind of um sort of a modern upgrade refresh of the old uh, i6 and i6x radios that you that they've been building for years they look like kind of like this is the i range x clone of that the build quality is similar maybe slightly better uh gimbals seem a little bit better although they're still potentiometer gimbals um, but yeah they basically I think introduced a whole new protocol with this radio as well called the ant protocol which is a 2.4 gigahertz based protocol it's not one of those like long range protocols the max range is about a, a kilometer which is not any better or worse than the um, the AF HDS2 a protocol which is what the i6 and i6x used so i'm not really sure what they're doing here with this um it doesn't really give you a whole lot of additional functionality now they have uh basically uh sort of brought everything to the to the to, uh, current standards like you can like for example you can add additional sensors to their receivers and this is the receiver that it came with uh they do have smaller receivers which, which i would did not receive that work on that ant protocol as well and i will have a video later on the uh, g7p this is their ground vehicle transmitter also on the ant protocol um i'll have a video on that one later but yeah this uh, if you look at their current lineup from FlySky, this is like kind of slightly better than their what they've been putting out on the uh, 2A protocol, but not as good as their one radio, the thing's called the Paladin, that uses the 3 protocol. And um, you can actually put a module on here that will use the 3 protocol. Um, and that's what that module base for. Now, I don't know if they're going to be upgrading this to any kind of open TX or edge TX compatibility in the future. That, I don't know. Um, currently not supported on those open source um, projects although you know who, who knows you know the uh, piece of some people that made open uh, open tx uh available to work on these older radios so you never know what, what might happen in the future this is priced around 75 dollars i believe for the standard version 85 dollars for the upgraded version and the, uh, the upgraded version gives you the um gr module bay compatibility um, the batteries, again, they still use the uh, four AA batteries if you want, but now you can use a 2S battery here, which is with a JST plug, which is what I'm currently powering the radio with. And yeah, just looking at the whole radio, you got these two momentary switches here in the back. You have uh, a couple of dials here. These are centering dials that actually they center on their own on the shoulder. You have uh, non-centering dials here in the front. Uh, you have your scroll wheel and your screen and you have your uh, menu and exit buttons here. So this just runs like a, their proprietary um, operating system. I'm not going to go over everything here. It's pretty 
pretty similar to the way uh, the old uh, system works on the i6 and i6s for 80 is they just kind of updated a little bit now you can do firmware updates via their pc software and the usb-c port and this is also uh, works with a um, simulators via usb-c and they have a trainer port here on top this antenna here is not collapsible it just kind of sticks out like this but you can i guess you could use it as a handle that's pretty strong um the switches here you have uh two position over here two position over here these are all shorts and a long uh, switch another long switch here three positions here and two positions there um and you have your trim buttons here uh, that's pretty much it um it's pretty scanner gibbles they these have these transparent plastic here, but it doesn't look like it light up at all. At least I haven't, I didn't see anything in the menu in terms of LEDs. And then you, I think you can control these LEDs in the menu to change the color. Uh, long press of the button to turn the transmitter on and off. So yeah, it's a, you know, it's an eight channel radio, pretty basic, not super long range. It's, it's sort of targeting. Uh, the entry-level sort of beginners that are out there and they're pushing this new ant protocol to replace their old uh, two-way protocol and I think it's so they can add additional features which they couldn't do on the older uh, receivers so you have to so if you do get this you have to get all new receivers and uh, this is an open source doesn't work with anything else so you're basically buying into a closed ecosystem here just the fly sky ecosystem so for those of you that, that like the fly sky system you know, it's going to be right up your alley. For those of you that are not familiar with it, then you have to get all new equipment to get compatibility with this system. So, yeah, I'm, I, you know, for me, it's not, you know, something that I'm going to be using. I'm probably going to give this away on my Instagram at some point. I, I'll, I'll see if I'm going to be using this at all. Uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see additional content on this radio. I, I did hook it up to Betaflight uh, just to see how the sticks felt. Uh, on the screen, and I did use it as in a simulator. It seemed to be okay. I mean, sticks felt good. I was able to fly. You know, nothing really to write home about. Nothing amazing or anything like that. It's a you know entry level uh, radio, but you know you can use it with simulators if you're getting started. You know, you know let me know if you guys want to see additional content on this uh, radio transmitter in the comments section. You know, I'm probably not going to uh, use this for anything else. I may do a giveaway on this one down the road if i end up just if this ends up just sitting in the corner i'll end up giving it away so um yeah that's about it for this one if you got any questions uh let me know i'll link this in the uh, other smaller receivers if you're interested in that down in the video description and i'll talk to you guys in the next video